Hey guys, here's a video. I'm going to be showing you how to use X signals in LTM Designer. It's a really powerful tool. Um, I know a lot of people that use LTM that don't know what it is. But here's your chance um, if you've been wondering how to use it. So I'm going to break it down, try to be pretty simple about it. Um, there's not much to it, but it's a really powerful tool. So let's get into this. Right now I have a design um, using USB 3.0, just a standard micro AB connector, and then a device. You don't really need to know what it is, but it's a Cypress FX3 USB 3 um, device, the, the BGA here. So to do this, um, I'm not going to show you the schematic because you just set it up uh, regularly and then just show the differential pairs. If you don't know how to do differential pairs, let me know and I can make a video about that. All right, so we go to design X signals, run X signals wizard. And it's a step-by-step -step guide. It's very simple. Click next. You have DDR3 and DDR4, USB 3.0. So you can look up what your actual, your length matching needs to be. And that's gonna have to do with the the propagation of the signal through the material that you're using for your PCB and the allowed delay. So I'm just assuming it's gonna be five mil and that'll probably be good enough. Click next. <clears throat> You're going to choose the source and target. In this case, it's just going straight from a device to a connector. And you click next. And this is really awesome. It finds all of the signals for this actual standard. So you analyze the nets and create the X signal classes. This will create the classes and apply rules to them. You can modify the classes or the net names, things like that. So click finish. Actually, I'm gonna show create spreadsheet. And if you wanna organize a spreadsheet for each of your different types of uh, routing standards or signal standards, there you go keep track of things that way. So we're going to click finish. Then you go over to PCB down here. And X signals. Now you see you have the TX, the RX, and then the DL, which is it's probably USB 2. This is USB 2. The RX and TX differential pairs for USB 3. So what I usually like to do is color code them. So click select here, and then select signals, right click, change X signal color. When you have a really complicated design, this makes it very simple and easy to follow. So you can either manually click these to enable the color changes or right click and display override and select. I'm gonna do the same thing to the RX. And also to the USB 2. Sure. So now you see if you are still in the 
layout phase, you can adjust your component positions so that these rat, rat's nests, is sometimes what people call them, are not crossing. And then you can adjust your actual pin locations using pin swapping, or you can manually do it. If you want a tutorial on pin swapping, I can also do that. I just wanted to keep this simple so that people that want to see something about X signals will be able to see this. All right. So next thing we can do is click and hold this guy right here, go to interactive differential pair routing. Actually, before that, sorry, go to design rules. I already have rules set up. This is something you want to do. In LTM 9, I have heard that you can actually define impedances based on your layer stack, but you always want to check with your manufacturer first. I'm just assuming that the manufacturer gave us these dimensions um, to create 50 ohm traces and 100 ohm differential impedance between those two traces. So this is just an assumption on my part. You're going to have to adjust this based on what your manufacturer tells you you need. But for USB, it's 50 ohm, single-ended, 100 ohm differential. Okay. Always set your grid, or else it looks unprofessional. I'm gonna turn my snapping points off. I like to be able to snap on pads. Okay, snap distance. I usually like half of the snap grid and then near range, maybe one millimeter. Cool, all right, so now we're ready to route. Differential pair routing. Click. Click the space bar to adjust which side um, the bend is, is going to be on. So now that's done. And once that happens, you'll see X signals actually draws a line because it calculates the electrical length and it includes vias and everything like that. Now, I know I said I wasn't gonna to talk too much about differential signaling, but the best practice is to keep everything on the same layers. So for instance, if I had to drop this down to a different layer and then come back up, you need to do that on every single layer that needs to be matched. Especially important for DDR memory and things like that. Reason being is because if your stack up changes or if the manufacturer does something different, everything is mulled out because they all have the same characteristics now. So if, you're, if your board thickness is thicker or thinner than what you expected, it doesn't matter because they all go through the same number of vias. For some advanced designs, you may not be able to get away with doing that. So you need to be very close to your manufacturer to do that. Okay. Now, if you hold shift and press the space bar, you can adjust the actual um, the shape of the traces, or what kind of bending methods are used. OK. 
anything. And you see sometimes that kind of thing can happen. Best thing to do in that scenario is come from the other side. And now you see these are solid. Sometimes you'll see, for instance, yeah, you'll see them broken like this. The best way to see that is to go into view configuration and choose transparent 2D. Then you can see. And then if you drag it onto itself, those line segments should disappear and they should become solid. Let's finish this last one. Okay. <clears throat> so that's done. So if you actually needed to match the lengths in USB 3, you don't need to, but a lot of standards you do need to match differential pair lengths, not only between the pairs, but also each side of individual pairs. So we go back to PCB, X signals here, you can see your signal length. Now each pair is exactly matched because we routed it nicely. Um, I'm going to show you what would happen if it wasn't routed so nicely. So they should have these should have slightly different lengths. And guess what happens? X signals, it tells you. It tells you when they're different. See red and orange. Orange means that it's less than, red means that it's greater than. So in this instance, if you could not fix this, um, you go to interactively tune uh, tra trace length, and you see that the negative side is actually shorter. Now, depending on this signaling you use, you're gonna wanna put um, the, what are they called? You don't call them waves. They're, they're called, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> um, the wiggles or, or what have you. Okay. You want to put them closer to the, the source so that the signals are in phase for a longer period of time because then you have less interference. Okay. So we have this and you can use the period in comma to adjust the max amplitude. Three and four to adjust the space. And these also have different rules. Typically you want your spacing to be, I think maybe three to five times the, the, the gap or the thickness of the trace. You can look those things up. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Let's do this. Now this is interesting. So we want to adjust some of the characteristics until it's matched. So press tab, you can go over to here. So we want to see what it's matching to. 
850.352. Yes, that's what you want it to clip to, because that's, for X signals, it, it actually makes rules. So that's really cool. Now, I mean, it's a little bit out, but that has to do with the rules I set. If you wanted them to be exactly the same, in X signals, you would have had to choose them to be tighter matched. But you can adjust that in design rules, um, high speed, match to lengths. And since these are all the same, it, it makes the rules for you so you don't have to do them by hand. It makes all these classes for you. So let's change it to one mil. Why not? I mean, there's no downside to matching it closer. Let's do this again. Now it's matched even closer. Um, let's see. You can go as crazy as you want, really. But you may need to adjust the increment size and adjust the, the space and max amplitude and miter so that it could, so that you can assist it to find the correct um, size and shapes of the waves. Okay. So, look, now it's, it's perfectly matched. It's exactly the same. That's fantastic. 